Hey everybody, so in this video, we're gonna work through the worksheet from section 4.5, which is gonna put all of the different components of solving second order linear differential equations together. So just to kind of recap what we've done so far, um, so far we've started taking a look at differential equations of this form um, with second order linear constant coefficients that were homogeneous. And in those cases, um, what we did is we wrote out the characteristic equation, found the roots of the characteristic equation, and depending upon whether we had two distinct real roots, one repeated real root, or if we had complex solutions, we talked about the various forms that we would get for the homogeneous solution. So I'm going to denote the homogeneous solution with the subscript of H. And then we added in the case where what happens when we don't have zero over here, but we have some forcing function. And in those cases, we talked about doing the um, guess and check method. Uh, and so how um, we come up with our guesses is based on the form of the forcing function. So if the forcing function was degree and power function, then we guess the general degree and polynomial. If we had uh, exponential, we guessed an exponential. If we had a trig function, um, exponential times a trig, then we guess exponential times trig, but we need to include both the sine and the cosine in those guesses. So even if I was just given a force in function that only had sine in it, then my guess should have both the cosine piece and the sine piece. And we saw, we've already seen why we might need both of those pieces. And um, then um, we talked about the special cases, the very end of last class, about what happens when we have resonance. In other words, when the homogeneous solution and your guess for the forcing function um, are multiples of each other. And in those cases, um, then we might have to include either a multiple of t into our original guess um, or if, in fact, the homogeneous was a repeated root, then we might need to multiply by a factor of t squared. Um, and so then what would happen is you would plug your guess into the differential equation and then solve for the undetermined coefficients. All right, so now let's see how we can combine the both pieces, the homogeneous and the non-homogeneous solutions, to come up with general solutions for non-homodifferential equations. So let's first assume that yh is a solution to uh, the homogeneous equation. So in other words, that would tell us that y sub h satisfies um, this equation over here. Uh, namely, when I plug yh in, I get 0 on the right side. And then let's assume that y with a subscript of p is going to be what we call the particular solution and what that means is this would be our guess that when we plug it into the differential equation, we get the forcing function f of t on the right side. And so now what this is asking us to show is that if I take the sum of these two functions, yh plus y of p, that this also is going to be a solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. So if I take y and plug it into the differential equation, then what we see is we would get the following. Um, so I would just take the derivative of y, so I would take the derivative of the homogeneous and the particular pieces separately. Uh, I missed the prime over here. So we would get this differential equation. And now if we go ahead and group just the homogeneous pieces together, then I would have uh, take into account that we've got this piece, this piece, and this piece. That would give me a y h double prime plus b y h prime plus c y h. And then let me group the um, particular pieces together. I also have three of those. And when I do that, I would get an a y p double prime plus b y sub p prime plus c y sub p. And now um, notice that the stuff in red over here, since y sub h was a homogeneous solution that we saw over here, all of that red stuff gives me 0. 
and all of this blue stuff over here gives me the forcing function f of t. So when I combine those two together, I get 0 plus f of t, which of course gives me just f of t. And so now we see that, yes, indeed, this is a solution. So when I plug y equals yh plus yp into the original differential equation, we just proved that what we get out on the right side is f of t, so that means their sum is a general solution as well.